I pointed to Google Maps on my phone and said, the hab is a place where you can sell the cow and drink the milk. To make it simple, you can have it both ways. There is still a certain distance from the bustling metropolis. The entire Sinai Peninsula is sparsely populated, and more than 90% of the land is mountains and deserts. So far, the northern Sinai, which accounts for 40% of the entire Sinai Peninsula, is still a restricted area, and it is even difficult for Egyptians to set foot here. Such a background laid the basic conditions for Dahab to become a utopia. The most commendable thing is that it does not have the negative effects of other escapes on Earth. The Sinai Peninsula, where Dahab is located, is at the junction of Asia and Africa, and at the crossroads between the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. Geographically, it is close to Asia, Africa, and Europe. It is across the sea from Saudi Arabia, about two hours' drive from the borders of Jordan and Israel, and only 90 kilometers from Sharm El Sheikh International Airport. Although sparsely populated, it is not far from the developed world geographically. Unlike the western coast of the peninsula, which is guarding the entrance of the Suez Canal and is relatively busy with traffic, Dahab is fortunately located in the Gulf of Aqaba on the leeward side of the east coast of the Sinai Peninsula. Enjoy the quietest and most fertile waters of the Red Sea. It is more appropriate to describe the location of Dahab as peace and quiet in noisy surroundings. It can maintain convenient communication with the outside world while isolating external noise. In addition, Dahab's perfect climate also determines the essential difference between Dahab and other escapes on Earth. Here, you don't have to wear and tear your body like those who endured in bitter cold places, but achieve inner peace and contentment in a pleasant, healthy, consciously focused way, and once you acquire this ability, it will accompany you. Your whole life, wherever you go. After listening to my interpretation, Eslam and Lisa were very excited. Eslam said, let us keep the secret of Dahab. I smiled knowingly, lying on my back on the blanket, and fell into silence. Across the sea, lights from a city in Saudi Arabia flickered in the distance, and stars shone over Mount Sinai. I closed my eyes. Accompanied by the gentle night breeze of the Red Sea, I fell into a dream without knowing it. In my dream, I saw a world frozen in time recorded by European explorers 200 years ago. There are Red Sea towns made of shining white coral stone. The arches and shutters are painted in turquoise and dazzling nomadic blue. I passed through the walled city. The towering gates creak at dusk slammed shut. I also rode a camel with the long-haired, stoic Bedouin galloping between the fortified oases. Just when I felt thirsty and wanted to drink a bowl of camel milk served by the Bedouin, an icy object touched my lips and broke my dream. I opened my eyes and saw that it was a bottle of beer handed over by Eslam. He smiled and said, I don't know what you dreamed about, you looked thirsty. Go back early to rest, and we will go diving in the blue hole tomorrow morning. 